Hello, so in this video today we're going to look at the geometry functions which are on our TI Inspire calculator. So to start off, let's make a new document. Today we are going to be using the Intro to TI Inspire Geometry Features worksheet that we have uh, on our Haiku page. And if you want to print it out and follow along, I'll show you what that looks like. So if you're following along on the worksheet, you'll have it look like this one right here where we're going to start off by just opening a document, making some points, and going on. In this video, we'll probably go through question uh, 16, and then in the next video, we'll do the rest of these problems. So here in this first video, let's look, we just, we start at the home screen, and we opened a new document. Okay, we're going to add a geometry page. So new document, and then add geometry, and here we go. To tell we're in a geometry page, we can... Here we see one centimeter up in the corner, and our page is here. So let's save this page. First thing we do, file. We're going to save as. We type it in, whatever, what we want. Intro to geometry. Okay, so there's your title, and then we'll just say save. As you save the document, the name should then appear up here at the top of your screen. Now let's put in co in your points. So to do this, just like ordering something at a menu, seeing what they have, we're going to go to menu, see what the calculator can do. And here we're going to see points. Okay, when I click on points from the menu screen, we'll click on point, add a point. And here our cursor is changed to the little pen with the dot on the end with our point. And here I'm just going to click. To add a point and I'm going to drop three collinear points on. Okay. We can sit, still see my pen or my cursor is a little pencil with the dot and to get rid of that I can hit the escape button and it will go back to just being my arrow. Now that I've done that I want to name these points so again I'll go to menu, I'll go to actions and I can go to text. Now I've turned into the little text icon for my cursor and as I move it around, I could add text anywhere, but to add a name to the point, I scroll over until it changes, and I can see the point shows up. When I click on that, it will give me a text box where I can add the point. If I then want to move, I can come over and control click on my on the label, and I'm able to grab it. It should look like a little hand and move it around near my point. So let me add the rest of these points here. Okay, I clicked on it, B. Okay, I can hit enter, just click off, and then move the point. I can do the same thing here with point C. Hit enter, and now there we go. Now as you're following along on the sheet, let's uh, create a line that goes between A and B. So again, I'm going to menu, going to lines, create a line. First I click on point A. I scroll across, click on point B, and when I click there, I can see that it has created that line. We know it's a line because it goes past those endpoints, and it would keep going on forever. Again, I can go hit my escape key, and uh, the cursor will go back to just being my arrow. So here is line A, B. Now let's create a line segment. Again, menu, points and lines, and we can look at segment this time. So number five. And we want a segment between endpoints B. So scroll over, put your cursor on B. It becomes a little finger. I click on B. Now I scroll. And when the it becomes a finger on point C, I click, and there is my line segment. You can see it's a segment because it ends at the endpoints B and C. I hit escape, and there we go with back to my cursor. So I'm no longer in drawing segment mode. That is now line segment B, C. And as I scroll over it, I can see what the name of it is. So here was line, and here is segment B, C. Now what we can do is let's draw a ray. So just like we've been doing in class. So again, menu, points and lines. Look at ray. We want ray with an endpoint of C, and it contain or endpoint of A, excuse me, and it contains C. So we need to first go click on A. That will be our endpoint. Then we click on point C, and we can see that this is a ray because it starts at point A here, 
and it continues past point C, so it's a ray headed in that direction. I can hit escape and back to my arrow there. So now we've been able to draw a line, a line segment, and a ray. Now let's look at measuring some of these things. So to measure, we can go back to our menu. There's a measurement men, uh, option, and let's click on length. So we want to measure length first. Well, am I able to measure a line? No, because lines have infinite length. Same thing with rays. Rays have infinite length because they go on forever in one direction. So the only thing I'm able to measure here is point is segment BC. So when I click on it, I've measured it now and see the measurements now with my hand. So I have to click again and there is the measurement of line segment BC at 9 centimeters. If I want to create now, I want to divide this line segment into and put into two smaller line segments. I can add a point on that line. Go to Menu, Points and Lines, Point On, and this will be a point on a line. And I want to put a point on line segment D or BC, and I'm going to call it D. So when I click on line segment BC, I can then put my point anywhere on that line. So when I put my point there. There it is. Let me now name that point. So again, menu. I'm going to go to actions. I'm going to go to number seven, text. Scroll to where it changes and shows me that it's a point and put in D. I can control and click to move D to where it's not in the way of anything else. And there we go. So again, I'll move this now so it's not quite in the way for our next thing. So now, up here you can also see in the corner it's telling me what fun what I'm doing right now. So right now I'm adding text. If I scroll over there, click a location that places text there. And press enter to close the text editor. So okay, there I would have added text. I don't want to do that. And I hit escape and see it goes away here so I'm no longer in text mode. So now I want to go back to measure. So menu, measurement. Again, we're going to measure, measure length. This time we can't go click because it's going to measure that whole segment. So what we need to do is click on the two points that end the segment that we want to measure. So if we click on point B, scroll across, and click on point D, there it's going to measure that segment. So there, if we do that, it's 4.14 centimeters. I can do the same thing here. Click on point C, go across, click on point D, 4.91 centimeters. So when I add those two together, 4.91 plus 4.14, I should get the total, which is 9.05. So now that we've done that, we've measured lengths of line segments. Now let's measure an angle. So again, I'm here. I can see that I'm in length. I'm measuring length, which I don't want to be, so I'll hit escape. Now I need to go to menu and back to measurement. And we're going to click on now angle. When we click on angle, you have to start with one of the points on one of the sides. So point C here is on one of the sides. Scroll across to point A. Click there. So then click your vertex. As I scroll out, you can see the numbers start to change. So if I wanted a certain angle, I could do that. But I want to measure what the angle CAB is. So then I'm going to scroll across to point B, click, and it shows me, okay, there is the angle CAB and that is 47.8 degrees. I'm going to move that just so we can kind of start getting it looking a little more official there. So once I've done that, we can move that around as well to make it look good. So now we're almost done. So that's the interior of that angle, right? We could keep adding rays or such which is number 15 on that worksheet if you were following along where it says create a point on the interior. So we draw a point in here and then we could measure those two and we would see that the two parts equal our whole angle. What I also want to show you is that you are able to click any of these points and drag them around. So if I click C and drag them around, we can see all my numbers changing. So if I made a, a right angle, which hopefully I can do, it's jumping around. I can't quite get it perfect, 
So it's not a right angle, now it's an obtuse angle, but I see all these measurements change. I could drag D and change those measurements as well as I could drag B. So as you see, this calculator does some cool things, and this is just the basics. If you want to follow along with the rest of the worksheet, we'll look at the next two videos that we're going to have where we're going to look at drawing linear pairs, and then we're going to look at drawing perpendicular lines. So before you leave this screen, make sure you click on the menu up here at the top. I can either get there by clicking that, or I can get there by clicking the dock button, go to file, go to dock, go to file, and then go down here to save. And that will now save it. So if I continue working somewhere else, I can always come back and see what I have saved. So go back to the home screen and I continue on.